let's start by first quickly going through some fundamentals. In this figure, you see a trapezium ABCD and a parallelogram EFCD, right? Now, do they share anything in common? Yes. Yes, they do. They do have a common side CD which forms their common base. What about this figure? It is made up of two parallelograms that have a common base CD. And here? What do you see here? That's right. There are two triangles ABC and DBC and these two triangles have a common side BC which also forms their common base. In case of this parallelogram and the triangle, side DC is the common base. In all these cases we just saw now, there are two shapes that share a common side and also two common vertices which belong to the common side. But what about the non-common vertices? They don't lie on the same line as we can see. But what if the non-common vertices also lie on the same line? Let's look at a few examples where this happens. We have this figure here. Quadrilaterals ABCD and EFCD have a common base CD and so C and D are their common vertices. And then we have non-common vertices which are A, B, E and F. Now, even though they do not coincide, they lie on the same line which is AF. And this AF is parallel to the common base CD. In this figure too, the quadrilaterals ABCD and EFCD have a common base CD and opposite vertices AB and EF lie on the same line that is parallel to the common base DC. Now, look at this figure having two triangles, triangle ABC and DBC. With BC as the common base, the opposite vertices A and D lie on the same line and this line is parallel to BC. Finally, when we put a triangle and a quadrilateral together, you can see that ABCD and PDC have a common base CD and opposite vertices A, B and P all lie on the same line which is parallel to the common base DC. So, what can we conclude from these two sets of figures that we saw so far? Well, in both the cases, the figures shared a common base and two common vertices. Now, in the first set of figures, the non-common vertices did not lie on the same line. However, in the second set of figures, the non-common vertices lay on the same line and this line was also parallel to the common base. Okay, come on. Let's have some more fun with such figures. We have a parallelogram ABCD. Now, we'll draw any random segment DE such that E lies on the side AB between the vertices A and B. Next, we'll cut out the triangle ADE from this parallelogram. Let's name it A dash, D dash, E dash. Finally, we'll place this triangle such that A dash, D dash coincides completely with the side BC of the parallelogram. What do we see here? We will see that the new shape thus formed, that is E, D, D dash, E dash, is also a parallelogram, isn't it? Now, let's take things one step further and make this even more interesting. We know that the area of ABCD is the sum of the areas of triangle ADE and quadrilateral EDCB. From the way we have created triangle BCE dash, we also know that it is congruent to triangle ADE and hence both the triangles have the same area. So we can rewrite the area of ABCD as area of triangle BCE dash plus the area of EDCB. This is also the area of the new parallelogram EDCE dash, if you observe the figure. Hence, we can conclude that the two figures have the same area. And what we have just observed here is a very important property. Let's see what we have found out. Both of these figures have a common base and lie between two parallel lines. This leads us to the conclusion that the areas of two parallelograms that share a common base and lie between the same two parallel lines are equal. And this is a very important theorem which we can also prove theoretically. Of course, we just proved it by playing around with the parallelogram. But we can't really cut a parallelogram and move the pieces here and there to prove theorems now, can we? 
So let's see how this can be proved theoretically. Before that, we'll state the theorem. Our theorem states that parallelograms on the same base and between the same parallel lines are always equal in area. So let ABCD and EDCF be two parallelograms with a common base CD and lying between the parallel lines AF and DC. We have to prove that the area of ABCD is equal to the area of EDCF. Now let's consider the two triangles ADE and BCF. Since AD is parallel to BC and AF is the transversal, we have angle DAE and angle CBF as corresponding angles, which means that they are equal. Similarly, since ED is parallel to CF and AF is the transversal, we'll have angle AED and angle BFC as corresponding angles, hence they will also be equal. Since two angles of these two triangles are equal, the third angle of both the triangles must also be equal, right? And so, angle ADE and angle BCF are equal as well. Finally, we know that AD and BC are opposite sides of the same parallelogram and hence, they are also equal. So, we get triangle DAE is congruent to triangle CBF by the angle side angle or ASA rule. We now know that the areas of the congruent triangles are equal. So, area of triangle ADE is equal to the area of triangle BCF. But, the area of ABCD is the sum of the areas of triangle ADE and the trapezium EDCB. Here, if we replace the area of triangle ADE by the area of triangle BCF, we have the area of ABCD is equal to the area of BCF plus area of EBCD. Now look at the RHS of this expression. From the figure, we can clearly see the sum of the area of BCF and EBCD is nothing but the area of EFCD. Therefore, we have area of ABCD is equal to area of EFCD and with that we have proved that both parallelograms have the same areas when they share a common base and lie between the same two parallel lines. Well, that was a lot of theory, wasn't it? Let's take a break from all of this theory and try to solve a problem now. Sounds good? Okay, then let's begin. Do you see a figure here? Cool. Here ABCD is a parallelogram and in this figure we have been given that the length of AB is 32 while that of AE is given to be 8 and CF is the height which is given as 16. With all this information we want to find AD. Now DC and AB are the opposite sides of the parallelogram hence they are equal. So we get AB is equal to DC and they are both equal to 32. So, we know that the area of a parallelogram is given by base into height. If we take the base as DC, then we know that the height is AE. However, if we take AD as the base, then CF would be the corresponding height. Considering either of these cases, area of the parallelogram can be written as AD into CF as well as DC into AE. So, we can equate both these expressions for the area of ABCD and get DC into AE is equal to AD into CF. Substituting the values of DC as 32, AE as 8 and CF as 16, we get 32 into 8 is equal to 16 into AD. Taking 16 to the left hand side, we will have 32 into 8 divided by 16 is equal to AD. Now, 32 divided by 16 is equal to 2, so that gives us AD as 2 into 8, which is equal to 16. Therefore, we have the length of AD as 16 units. Having done that problem, let's now look into another theorem. Tutormate. For more amazing videos, download the free app on Apple App Store and Google Play Store.